<laughs> My name is Tori, and I am here at the room with Face the King, who's judging tonight's Battle of the Bands finals. And if you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell them what you do in the band, I guess. I'm Daniel Vecchio, I play lead guitar. I'm Eric Jolinger, I sing, play guitar, and keyboards. And I am Joey, and I play bass. So, you guys have been working on your new EP, right? Yes. So, I mean, where are you guys in the recording process? Do you have a goal release date? Well, we, we posted that we were like 80% done, and only 60% of that was true. Because 20% of it's done, the other 30% of it is almost done. So if I had to put a ratio together, I'd say we're about two-eighths close to being 80% done. No, realistically, right. we're about, honestly, if you had to, she was like, oh my god, I really wish I could have we're, we're vocals, that's it. Oh, wait, I see you're in there. Um, and a couple of transitions. How does it feel to be back in the studio? I mean, you guys have been playing some shows and promoting your last EP for a while. Um, this is, this is oh, my first experience uh, in the studio, uh, just recently. Oh, right From what I understand in the past, it's been a different kind of experience uh, in the studio each time. You know, they did it by a different method. Oh, you know, this time, uh, it's a little bit different because we're doing everything ourselves. We have a home row studio. You know? So uh, it's, it's a, kind of a new challenge, but it's definitely a uh, more beneficial experience. Also, uh, we have a rule in the studio. There is no drinking. There is no smoking. Not speak English, so it's made it remarkably difficult to communicate when you're trying to get a question. Latin has been the uh, voice of choice. That's it. Yeah, that's how we do it. All right. That's why Joey's not speaking it, right it now. Pan. See? <laughs> Musically, how is this going to be similar or different to? Right. We're kind of wanted to be constantly be an evolution of what we were prior, so. Whereas it's going to have similarities to the last music, but it's going to just be a completely evolved version of it. It's a little bit of a departure from what we were doing, but we'll still be in face of the game. Well, you guys just sold out Eric's theater. And last time I talked to you, Eric, you said that that was like one of your goals as a band. But Our New Year's Yeah, what are your New Year's resolutions? How was that showing? You guys were like tweeting on this picture. You know, like, it was awesome. I mean, it, this was our second time, uh, my second time playing with that at Gramercy Theater. Uh, the first time we had it, you know, a good amount of people, but this was the first time uh, we sold out shows. It was, uh, it was a thrill, to say the least. Don't get me wrong, and I love the vibe that we got from the crowd, but... Um we didn't actually play the show. I don't, this is for all of you fans. I know I'm breaking the fourth wall by looking into the camera. Um, for those of you who don't know, we pulled the Millie Vanilli. We hit a CD button and pressed play. And we didn't even do MP3. It was actually a CD. And we just kind of pretended like we played that show. Uh, so We're just really good dancers. It was good. It was good. No, truthfully, that was um, a show like that makes every other show work. How does it feel to be kind of on the other side of the competition, like judging instead of participating? Well, I've never judged this summer before, so it's going to be kind of weird, I guess. It'll be fun. We have to come see some good bands, you know. Yeah, it's, it's something new for me, too. I've never uh, had to judge the competition. It kind of makes me feel What I like most about this is we're not really judging them. I like being a fan and then winning us over. So we're not going in there being like, well, Charlie was dressed inappropriately for this show, and I feel as though being a metal band that should have been more black and less a tote. It's not the reality of it. So we're just going to watch and see which band makes us want to go out and buy it. Are there any weird, like, foods or anything that, like, one person in the band likes that everyone else thinks is really weird? Like, does anyone do any strange or eat any strange things like that? I think the first person I went to is really, uh, it's not really that I eat strange, strange things, I think it's the amount of food. Let me just tell you, that watching Dan eat is awful. To say the least. Do you know, do you know, when, the you know when you're watching TV and something comes on and it's like uh, two pieces of fried chicken with bacon and cheese and, and mayonnaise and sauerkraut in between and you're like, who in their right mind would eat it? And, and then covered oh. with two Krispy Kreme donuts yeah. as the buns. Dan always eats it. That's the 
have you guys had any like weird or interesting fan experiences or stories about fans? I'm assuming that means that there's a story. Um, well, I guess one interesting uh, story, not more interesting, but pretty awesome actually, was uh, we had a, we had a fan in Florida send us over a hundred dollar gift card to Starbucks. Okay. So we did was really drink donuts and uh, she, uh, she's more of a Starbucks fan because Starbucks is generally uh, higher quality, I suppose you could say. But, uh, that's one. Um, we do get a lot of other uh, interesting comments from fans on Twitter. Uh, some that I'd probably rather not repeat. <laughs> Are there well, any that's the, I'll, 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 no, I'll no, not, no, probably not. not yeah. I can say in, in, in my years of playing music, when it comes to fans and strangers the fans, I don't know. Yeah. One that I'll bring up with her. I once had a fan who was his own nipple at our show. Really? With one of the band's buttons. I don't think he remembers it. Oh. Okay. Okay, so my next question for you. You guys can debate this on yourselves as much as you want. 70s or 80s rocks? Hey, that's Josh. I'll answer. As a as a guitar player, I'd probably say 80s, but as a listener, I'd probably say 80s. I'm gonna have to say yes. Yeah, I like I like 70s. People will criticize the 80s. I really want to take some young to wear clothes that tight <laughs> with cheetah print on it and a neon pink bandana. Oh, yeah. But the reason I have 70s is um, 70s was if you listen to the recordings of 70s rock, they're <laughs> completely imperfect. No. And it's about, it was about balance, capturing man. the best performance on the time. Now, can I ask you a question? Okay, switch. Can I have the cards? Being the new singer and front woman for Face the King, out of all the songs that Face the King plays, which is the song that you enjoy playing live the most? I'm sorry, that answer is incorrect. Oh, it was perishable. I actually have one more funny question okay. for you. Maybe let's switch. And this is my question of the day. And you can get free. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those good ones. Um, if you could play drinking games with any other band in the world, dead or alive, who would you play with? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why not? I, I just figured I would throw it away. Because Motley Crue is awesome. Good answer. That's Joey's. Because I wear <laughs> Dan, what's your name? I thought you were going to be I have so many I mean, favorite drinking there are so many. Uh, <laughs> you think he's answering questions for citizenship? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know that the biggest partying bands uh, were around the time of the 70s and 80s. Back then. So, um, Nothing was strange. Or from <laughs> anything from. Or, st or Steel Panther. Steel Dragons. Steel, steel Dragons. Um, for today, I would say I would say Steel Panther, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with either Zeppelin or Van Halen. Uh, you're not gonna believe this, but this is the truth, and this is part of my thing. I don't drink. I've never even been drunk. He looks like I he believe does. that. So, but if I could play a drinking game that didn't, in, let's say, it involved like, apple juice. Okay, apple juice. <laughs> it has a high amount of arsenic. So. But. If I could drink okay, apple juice um, in a drink Water game. shots. Water shots, perfect. <laughs> shots um, of wheatgrass. I would... Wheat, right. I would have to go with the uh, Barber Streisand. No, I'm sorry. It's yes. not... It's oh, not... Good. It's not Barber Streisand. It's, it's not too soon. Okay. If I had to pick... I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to give you another series. Party, party, okay. ready? Yes. Damien Rice. Why? You know who Damien Rice is? No. Oh, you said dead or alive? Yeah. Jeff Buckley. And, uh, oh, okay. Jeff Buckley is, in my opinion, the greatest singer to never make it as famous as Jeff Buckley. And I never, way too young, making his second record. And I would love to know. He was making his record his in the river? Yeah. Well, he was yeah. in the river. He was in the river. Yeah. So it, it would be Jeff Buckley. I would honestly want to know. But I would love to ask him about that second record because they released it after he, after he passed away and people mixed it and mastered it and did everything. And I wanted, I would love to sit down, have a drink of wheatgrass with him and ask him how he feels about the record. You should have asked, like, like, if you could bench press with any person, dead or alive, who would it be? All right, answer. Zach Wilder. Wilder. No, Freddie Mercury is the queen because I think I could lift more weight than him and at least I could be tougher.
<laughs> he's far more talented than I am, so at least I can have one of them. Like, you might sing better. I can't even like, care anymore. Thanks a lot. Sorry. <laughs>